small crowd, t-shirt or hoodie, new record. Okay. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, what is happening? I'm Edgar B. Herwick III with WGBH and Front Row Boston, and we are here in Boston, backstage of the Fraser Performance Studio at WGBH. And as you can see, I'm with a couple of guys uh, who are in a band called the Dropkick Murphys, which uh, I'm really happy to have you guys here. So, How are you doing, everybody? Happy to be here. Hello. In just a few short minutes, they're going to be uh, doing a performance in our Fraser Performance Studio for a live audience, an intimate performance, a acoustic -y performance for a live audience. Of course, you watching are going to be able to take part in that as well by checking it out, by sharing it uh, on your social media, say like, hey, check out the Murphys, they're playing right now. Also, most importantly, your job here is that uh, they've got a set list put together, but the final song, the final song, we don't know what that's going to be yet. You have two oh. options. We've got Rose Tattoo. Two options. Two options. Rose Tattoo and Barroom Hero. So you vote at home right now. If you're sitting at your computer, pick one. We'll let them know uh, at the end uh, what they're going to play. Does that make you nervous? You don't know which song it's going to be. Um, not ordinarily, but it just brings up the point. We we got to talk about how we would end Rose Tattoo if oh, that wins. True, yeah. And we got to talk about how we play Barroom Hero acoustic. We haven't played that in a while. So... We can't. What we can promise the winner, the the winning vote, is that we will play that song. What we can't promise is a good performance of that song. <laughs> Excellent. Keep that's it what, loose. Keep it loose. That's what being live is all about. So, um, so guys, before you take the stage, uh, you know, Ken, you guys have a brand new album out, Eleven Short Stories of Pain and Glory. Uh, certainly, that album title smacks of something that's a cohesive idea. Is that what's happening with this new album? I think we try to make every record like that, you know. Um, we're thinking about track one to track ten, how they blend together both musically and the message of the songs. Um, you know, a serious couple of serious songs maybe followed up by something lighthearted, you know, a couple of fast songs followed up by something a little slower. So we're always thinking like that. Conceptually wise, um, obviously there was a larger story to this with, with you know, what uh, a lot of us were dealing with in our lives with... Uh, the opiate crisis and, and overdose deaths and that's heavy subject matter you know so like if you're going to tackle something like that you know you, you need to one have hope in the message right and there is hope and two you have to have other songs you know what i mean because 11 songs about that but like oh man you know i gotta go listen to somebody else after this and and i think it's important if you're trying to get a message across that you know you do it in a way where you know, people get a taste of it, and, and you maybe get them to listen, but, you know, you're not wagging a finger at anyone either, you know? So you guys are at 21 like years my, together you know right now? I mean, like my mother used to wag her finger at me like this, you know? <laughs> 20, 21 years together now? Does that feel well, insane? Yeah. It's, it's it's now. It's like, oh, it is now. Yeah. 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 Does that feel insane? Yeah, it, it feels very insane. Now they say it happened so fast. <laughs> it happened so fast. It did. It's a, you know, two decades, boom, you know? But so with well, this lucky dudes. Yes. There it is. All right. All right. So this interestingly though, in that whole period of time, you guys recorded a ton of albums. You always recorded them in Boston, but this one you got out of town to do. What was was there a reason behind that? I mean, busy lives, busy kids, family, friends, you know, re responsibilities and you're doing it at home and you're trying to record an album around your regular life and um we knew that we needed to just focus 100%, like, you know, eight albums at the t in the now our ninth album, but eight albums in already, like, we knew nine had to, like, be another step, you know, and w we just all agreed that we needed to kind of just take it up a notch, and, um, yeah, we went to 30 miles outside of El Paso, literally the middle of nowhere, Pecan Farm, and um, we made a record, just us and the... Uh, and the feral cats and uh, a bunch of rats and squirrels, yeah. squirrels scorpions, no black widow spider on James's bed one night. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> did you na did you name any of the animals? Did any of them get names? One, I call them uh, killer. I don't know. Uh, cutie pie, the one that was eating the uh, squirrel's face that yeah. Tim saw. Maybe that, <laughs> that was, was cutie Blanca. pie. <laughs> Blanca. Yeah. What about was it samurai or something like that? Birdie. 
No, there was Ninja. Ninja. Yeah. Excuse me. All the cats had names. These cats were all killers. They were they all were. trained killers. They killed anything that moved. We were lucky we weren't any smaller. So they would have probably tried to jump us. We saw Nary Scorpion because they probably just mild those things. Cats. Supposedly a squirrel will shake down. Supposedly a squirrel will shake down an entire pecan tree in a day. So they have these squirrel. I mean these uh, cats that uh, were feral cats, and now they just sort of live on the property, and they're there to sort of police the pecan farm, uh, and they do a, d- a damn good job of it. Oh, yeah, do we hear them on the record at all? Did any of the animals... You might say- think. <laughs> no, no, no cats on there. Uh, just, no. just maybe in some of the pictures from the... Oh, um, you know, but the then they get cat royalties you have to pay, and then yeah. it gets into a whole nother... Uh, that, that, that does sound really messy. That sounds really right. Well, all right, enough of this. You guys ready to go play some music? Let's yeah. do it. We got a whole bunch of people who are waiting to see you. So let's get up and let's go play all some right. music. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yes, sir. Hey guys, we do the. Oh yeah. Oh. Hey. Just quick, 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 quick. Hey guys. Boys, check it in here. We'll get them. Oh, this is intense. Now, if this goes down. We're gonna know. Get you all the jigs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go get them, guys. All right. One, two, three. Yeah. think there was an applause button in here or something. Wow. But thank you guys all for coming down tonight. Free concert at WGBH. You don't get that every day. We're stuck We're happy to, we they didn't almost think, didn't let us in. Yeah, we didn't think we'd get invited either, so this is a good, good day. Um, we just put out a new album, as uh, hopefully you all know, and um, we're going to play a few songs for you. With us? Yeah. Well, this, is the, uh, this is the first song off well, the first song that started us writing this album, and um, as, as many of you have probably heard us talk about, a lot of the subject matter covered on the album is about the uh, opi- opiate epidemic and uh, the crisis with overdose deaths and the band. And I'm sure everybody in this room has been very embroiled in that. We've been to one too many wakes in the last few years, and this particular song, a uh, version of it by Jerry and the Pacemakers, came on in my car as I was leaving awake, the song's called You Never Walk Alone, and I thought, uh, man, this is such a sad song, but there's so much hope in this song, and it really kind of, I don't know, hit home to what we were going through, and uh, it got us starting to write this record. So without this song, it probably wouldn't have finished this record ever. So the song's called You Never Walk Alone. <laughs> when you walk through a storm Hold your head up high And don't be afraid of the dark At the end of the storm There's a golden sky And the sweet silver song of a
Thank you. So we've been at it uh, 21 years as a band now, and um, this is our ninth ninth record. And we're about to leave on tour, on tour, and um, a week from a week from tonight, and we're going on over to Europe, um, and we're excited to do that. But we want to thank uh, everyone here in our hometown, particularly back in the days of the Rat Skeller that gave us our first start in music and let us play somewhere when no one else would let us play. And um, we wrote this song kind of about our, our start in the early days and about, you know, the mayor back then actually did not like Dropkick Murphys. The current mayor likes us a lot more and uh, I don't want to talk out of school about Mayor Menino because he was a good mayor and he passed away, but man, he didn't like the Dropkick Murphys. And I hated them. <laughs> And uh, so we got we got shipped out of town for uh, for a few years after a certain um, St. Patrick's Day concert at the Rat one year. And uh, so anyway, this is kind of just trying to write up a, a song about the timeline, the history of the band, and uh, our dedication to you and uh, the tremendous dedication and love you've shown us, which is uh, what inspires us to keep going. So, the song's called Blood. <laughs> Run! 
dawned on me the irony of singing that song acoustic in the bridge it says what does it say it says we'll we, keep it loud well, we won't we turn, turn down, down. But the reason that's referring that's referring to whenever we were playing these events in the city in those times, uh, they'd always say they can do it if they play acoustic. And uh, like if we were doing a fundraiser or anything, it always had to be you know we were told it had to be acoustic. I remember one time we were doing um, something down by Boston English High School, but it was actually for a strike that the the nurses were having at one of the hospitals, and um, and 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 it happened to be a lot of like kind of. West Indian, um, Caribbean um, women in front of the stage that were on the strike and we were playing acoustic and the mayor's people were going, go up there and make an announcement that there's to be no mosh pits. And it was like two o'clock in the afternoon acoustic for a bunch of nurses who had never heard the band before. And that's uh... And consequently, there were no mosh pits. <laughs> anyway, all right, so this, uh, this next song is uh, also off the record. It's called Sandlot and it's about for my life, uh, kind of those, those innocent early years of like maybe eight to 11 years old, where you just had small a like, window, small just window. had a like some mischief, but not, you know, nothing too bad. You just got a you know, first taste of trouble in a good way, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Anyway, and take it away. I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> what did you say? Very far. 
tell you what. All the stuff we've been doing in the last few weeks promotionally has all been acoustic, but we cannot wait to go play this shit loud! <laughs> hear, hear. Matt Kelly can't wait to get off this box here he's been sitting on for yeah. two weeks. Get his real drums out. It's whack, man. <laughs> yeah, it beats the table he had to play at Newbury Comics, right? That's last true. Week, we had an impromptu acoustic set at Newbury Comics, and uh, we just barge in. We, we, we don't even tell people we're coming, and we just prance around the st yeah, st store it's, playing. It's a good prance. Time. Prance. Usually get arrested. Anyway. So, um, this no next one is about... Uh, it's kind of coming out of a theme of youth, and it's about uh, going back to kind of the struggles with addiction and basically about uh, the young kids and saying, uh, don't give up on the youth. No one ever gave up on me and no one ever gave up on us, and uh, there's a lot of help out there, and uh, I want to send this out to everyone with the Gavin Foundation that's down here tonight. It's called Rebels with a Car. Push it! <laughs> He was referencing relation in the corner he came from The, the company, company he keeps She was from the country, far from the city They shared one love, they were destined for defeat He was tortured, he was troubled She was sick and she was lost Searching for an answer Rebels, Rebels with the cause Doing what they do to get what they need Life, Life was cheap, there were no guarantees Dead and kids, you don't want them, you don't need them And you'll always find a reason when you need to write them off you said they never listen, you said they'd be better off But we believed in you, we knew it from the start Hey kid, you got hot They were wretched, they were raw, they were tough and they were mean They were scared, they were cold, they were somewhere, somewhere in between. between Looking for a chance from someone who believed Remember what you're seeing, always what it seems Give a kid a hand, lift them up and dust them off For many who stumble, others will be lost For all who fail, so many who succeed Don't, Don't be angry at the kids, be angry at the grave Dead and kids, you don't want them, you don't need them And you'll always find a reason when you need to write them off Dead and kids, you can take them, you can leave them You said they never listen, you said they'd be better off But we believed in you We knew it from the start When you need to write them off Dead and kids, you can take them, you can leave them You said they never listen, you said they'd be better off Dead and kids, you don't want them, you don't need them And they'll always find a reason when you need to write them off Dead and kids, you can take them, you can leave them You said they never listen, you said they'd be better off But we believed in you We knew it from the start Hey kid, you got high Thank you. All right. How you guys doing? I oh, know. I was talking to the band. I'll see if they're ready for the next one. But how are you doing? All right. Good. 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 That means a lot that you come down tonight, and uh, this is very cool. We are. Uh, we don't get to do a lot of stuff like this with all this high. This is some serious technology we get going on up here, some fancy stuff. So thank you for allowing us into your lives, WGBH. Keep and up the good work. Thanks for the technology. You ready, Matthew? Let's rock and roll. All right, let's do this. And you know what? How about we just kind of rubble it in? Oh, yeah, okay, let's do that. Let's anticipate. Let's try it out. 
I had a hat when I came in, I hung it on the rack. I'll have a hat when I go out. I'll break somebody's back. Casey wore his brand new hat to Murphy's wig last night. Someone stole my hat, boy. It started up a fight. Casey smashed the furniture. Somebody's back. I'm a peaceful, loving man. I am, and I don't wanna shout. But I had a hat when I came in. I'll have a hat when I go out. Kids kept on shouting, boys. They couldn't keep him quiet. Someone phoned the cops up to come and stop the riot. Two cops rushed into the room, but kids laid him out. I fired him through the window. They both are getting shot. I had a hat when I came in. I hung it on the rack. Somebody's back I'm a peaceful loving man I am and I don't want to shout But I had a hat when I came in I'll have a hat when I go home I'm a peaceful loving man I am and I don't want to shout But I had a hat when I came in I'll have a hat He kept on shouting, boys, till one eye Patty Flynn Socked me in the whiskers with a great big rolling pin In a poor Casey senseless, it was an awful clown As he lay there unconscious, Casey shouted out I had a hat when I came in, I hung it on the rack And I'll have a hat when I go out, I'll break somebody's back I'm a peaceful loving man So yeah, as we, as we explain some of the songs, some of them uh, have some deep meaning and they're serious. And some are about hats and breaking backs. Just kicking someone's ass if they steal your hat. But you know what? That's a traditional song. And if you find a traditional song that has the names Casey and Murphy in it, you just got to do it, you know? So, hey, uh, all right, we got one song left. And then I guess we got one that they voted on online. This is wild. Uh, so uh, listen, Future. While we, before we play this last song, I want to say uh, to everyone watching out there around the world, if you're still up or overseas or wherever you might be, uh, we're very fortunate to get to travel around the world with this operation and uh, met some great people. And when we come on and do these things, you have people signing on from all over the world. So thank you for tuning in. And um, Everybody in Medford. Yeah, Medford. <laughs> and wrong. when they... And uh, hit share, send it, to, uh, send it to a friend, and maybe uh, we'll get this message out. Because uh, this next song, uh, Paying My Way, is, is about the hope at the end of the day when it comes to all these uh, addiction issues and any problems you may have in life. Uh, You've got to have hope, and you do the next right thing and the next right thing, and it leads to great things eventually. So that's what, uh, that's what this one's about. Take it away. Some days I hard, some days I long, some days I'm 
days fly by Some days I laugh, some days I cry I'm paying my way, I'm paying my way I'm paying my way, I'm paying my way second to uh, acknowledge all the people that uh, work with the band, uh, all the crew guys that have been with us for years are like family. Thank you guys. Our manager, Christine, uh, the director of the Clatter Fund over here. Our friends that are here that all sang backups on the album. Yeah, Brian, Jesse, Paul, Anthony, George, all of them. I know I'm missing somebody, but thank God for auto-tune. All right, let's hear it one more time for the Dropkick Murphys, everybody. Come on! So we're still live on Facebook, of course. I think you guys uh, here in the audience heard uh, that we're going to have a big reveal shortly about uh, what the finale song is going to be. That's one. His vote counts That's twice. Uh, it's wicked loud. We'll... we'll factor that in. Just to let you guys know here in the studio, and for those of you who are watching at home, you're part of a community of about 15,000 people who have been watching this tonight. We've got Not too shabby. almost 700 people have commented on Facebook. And listen, this is just a partial list uh, of where Boston has been, uh, this studio has been. Uh, people have been watching in Nuremberg, Kentucky, Sydney, uh, and Victoria, Australia, Paris, Quebec City, Allentown, Madagascar, Myrtle Beach, Toronto, Indiana. Somerville. 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 We're huge in Madagascar, little known fact. I did Enormous. not notice you mentioned Medford on that list. I'm sure there's some people at Medford. Is there anybody here from Medford? Yeah. They're, in, they're watching on Facebook. Yeah. Okay, so we, we, before, we, uh, before we move on to the finale and the big reveal, uh, we've got a couple questions from the audience that they wanted to throw to the band. Uh, so uh, I'm going to throw them out to you guys and answer as you like. Our first question comes from Mary K. Hilk. I hope I'm saying that name right. The question is, is what has your favorite venue ever been into to perform? Yeah, probably Fenway, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Brixton Academy, maybe, if you're talking music venues, Roundhouse? you know? CB's was pretty the amazing. CB's, we played one of the last shows at CBGB's. Vinny Stigma got in a Red Sox yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. uniform. So I mean. Vinny Stigma from Agnostic Front, I made a bet with him on the 2004 World Series that the loser would... Uh, you know, Yankees, Red Sox, ALCS, the loser would wear, and I'm like, God, I thought if I ever had to put on Yankees gear, you know? Painful. But uh, there, was a, there, there was a God, and the godfather of New York hardcore had actually put on a Red and Sox jersey. Whoa! To his credit. To his credit, he I, did. I have admitted since that I totally would have welched on that bet, so I give it a, I give it a Vinny for have, being man enough to stick it out. All right, we got a question from Yvonne Hickey. 
who asks, how did you come up with the name of the band? And more importantly, what were some of the close seconds that you decided not to go with? The technically, the very first name. So I, I don't know if a lot of people know this story is that um, we got asked to, um, I got challenged to start the band on a, on a bet on three weeks notice. So only one guy in the band had ever really played before. And, uh, so, and it was in Somerville, Club 3, someone said Somerville. And, uh, um, and it was freaking horrible, I'm not even going to lie to you. But I, we, we won the bet. And um, so in the, in the rut, one of the hardest things to do was to, and I've never admitted this before, so just you guys are hearing this here. The first name, and I think we wouldn't be on the stage at GBH right now if we stuck with it, but the very first name to win that bet, the Snots. Yeah. And uh, the, f the first shirt, yeah. you should see the artwork, yeah. it's amazing. You know what? But in all seriousness, you know, one of the guys that was on that, sh th there was a cartoon shirt. We actually made five shirts. And uh, one of them, one of the guys, our, our good friend Michael, uh, that was on that shirt and at that show just recently passed away from all the things we've been talking about. So. Um, yeah, so we changed it to Dropkick Murphy's very sh I think it was actually before the show happened, and um, which isn't a good move if you're I trying to be a band. I snots, you, 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 Let's make some shirts that say the snots and then change the band name before the show. Um, but Dropkick Murphy's was a um, kind of legendary old drying out spot uh, uh, in the Boston area bef way back before like rehabs and stuff, and th this guy John Dropkick Murphy was a... He, he would kind of primitively experiment with detoxifying people. We'd hear all these old guys talking about it, and we'd always say, that sounds so cool. And uh, he's long since passed away, but his son comes to see us, and uh, it's all come full circle. Wow, that's amazing. One more question. Give it up for the snots. Snots. <laughs> I, got, I got five T-shirts I'm trying to sell, if anyone wants to buy one. eBay. 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 Or the WGBH auction, maybe. Well, I mean, you, we'll see. All right, final question from Tamara uh, Marshall, who asks, do you miss the old days in the small venues? This is a small venue. Yeah, small venue. here we are, yeah. small venue. I mean, you know, I think um, in a perfect world, we'd be playing every night with no barricade up front and, you know, as close to the people as possible. Um, you know, and when you're doing, like, festivals in the summer, you definitely get to miss, like, being that close to the people, you know? Let me just say, well, we were backstage before... Uh, before this happened, and seriously, he, the last thing he was doing before we were ready to go live is he's double checking and making sure that you guys were going to be able to be close. So I mean, I just think that's really interesting that you're bringing that up because that that is what he was doing back there, saying, "Did you guys move the tape so everybody knows they can come he close knows to that the stage?" Crowd issues. Yeah, yeah. He's just so he's just he's just. But, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, this is. But a, that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, this is a different animal. It's you know acoustic, and no one's gonna like bum rush the stage. But we like when yeah. people bum rush the stage, so it makes us feel at home. Um, but but yeah, the answer is yes, we miss that. But it, obviously, any musician also wants like people to hear their music. So it's kind of, I feel like for us. Like House of Blues in Boston is a is a perfect fit for us in the sense that it's like it's larger, but it feels feels small, you know. All right, you guys ready to find out the reveal for one more song, one finale here at uh, WGBH with the Dropkick Murphys? All right, can you do a drum roll on that? Yeah. Should we do it? It's called the box roll. Box Thank roll. You. Box <laughs> roll. Rose tattoo. Hey, time out. I'm going rogue here. No, 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 no. Before we do that, let's do Byram Hero first. Yeah. Screw all those people who Breaking voted. all the yeah. rules. <laughs> I don't know this. Sitting on their asses on the computer. Lots of people at home going, I don't no. know this Byram Hero. Listen, we'll play both. How's that? Yeah. And there wasn't really much of a roar once you decided to do this, yeah. Face down in the gutter, won't admit defeat. Though his clothes are soiled and black, he's a big, strong man with a child's mind. Don't you take his booze away? Hey, bad at a boy is a good balls and beers. They are the most he meets. Hey, hey, hey! Side of your eyes, black, swollen eyes. As a man, he sheds no tears. Kids sing a different tune as they worry about their daddy dying. Hey, hey, but this hey. arrogant fool breaks every rule. I mean, nothing but his pride that kills him. 
Tattoo, we'll play Rose Tattoo. We gotta. Band wants to play. The pictures tell the story. This life had many shades. I'd wake up every morning and before I'd start each day I'd take a drag from last night's cigarette that smoldered in its tray Down a little something and then be on my way I traveled far and wide, laid this head in many ports I was guided by a compass, I saw beauty to the north I drew the tales of many lives, wore the faces of my own I had these memories all around me, so I wouldn't be alone Some may be from showing up, others are from growing up Sometimes I was so messed up and didn't have a clue I ain't winning no one over I wear it just for you I got your name written here In a rose tattoo In a rose tattoo In a rose tattoo I got your name written here In a rose tattoo Showing up, 
on the old internet and thank you to you guys for being here round of applause for yourselves and thanks you by being here you guys are supporting public media so from WGBH front row Boston and uh, and in uh, you know and for the band thank you guys one more time whatever happened to zoom let's let's talk when we leave here about trying to reboot it it was a good show, the Zoom. I like this show, Zoom. I like it. Come on, Zoom, 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 Zoom. I like this show. All right, have a good night, everybody. Yeah.